crazy for me. to God. We give God all the praise. Thank God for making us to see a new day today. God is good. And all the time, God is good. We've come here today to tell you about Jesus Christ, to tell you the message of salvation and how you can be saved. Because this world needs a Savior. You need a Savior. You need a Savior. And that's Jesus Christ. So we pray that God will touch the lives and the hearts of as many that will hear this word today, as many that will receive the gospel of Jesus Christ today, that you will be saved and that you come out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Our prayer for you today is that you no longer be a sinner, but you become a saint. That's God's plan for you, that you no longer worship your idol. You no longer go into your religion, but you follow the Lord Jesus Christ. You make him your Lord and Savior. And that you come out of sin, because there is punishment for sin, and it ends up in destruction. So we're calling you today to repent. We're calling unto you today, just the way Jesus Christ says. He says, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Time is running out for you. Time is running out. Repent and follow Jesus Christ. Repent and turn away from your unrighteousness. Choose life that you may live. So today we are going to talk about the Bible and why it is true and why you need a Savior. Because this world lies in wickedness. And just like the Bible says, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. So even if you think you are a good person, you must have told a lie before, or you, you must have stolen something before, or you, you must have broken God's laws and commandments. And if you break God's laws and commandments, there will be punishment. So that means you are no longer a good person, you have fallen short. And the reward for sin or the reward for breaking God's laws is punishment. It's hell. It's destruction. But you can only be saved when you repent. You can only be saved when you turn away from unrighteousness. You can only be saved when you turn away from worldly lust and pleasures. And when you turn to Jesus Christ in humbleness, ask him for forgiveness, humble yourself, come to him, cry out to him, ask him to forgive you, ask him to wash away your sins, ask him to come into your life, surrender to him and make him your Lord and Savior, make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. So today the big question is, are you a slave? Are you a slave? Are you a slave to sin? Are you a slave? Are you a slave to sin? Do you obey sin? Is sin your idol? Is sin your God? So are you a slave to sin? The Bible says if you are a slave to sin, that means you want to do anything sin asks you to do. Are you a slave to sin? Remember, there is one way that that whole, that strong world of sin can be broken from your, from your life, and that's Jesus Christ. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ, and there's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Jesus Christ might be saved. You can be saved if you believe in Jesus Christ. You obey him and you repent from sins. And it says, those who do not believe 
have been condemned already. If you do not believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you do not make him your Lord and Savior, you have condemned yourself already. So the big question is today, are you a slave? Are you a slave to sin? Are you a slave to drunkenness? Are you a slave to your smoking? Are you a slave to your weed? Are you a slave to adultery? Are you a slave to crime? Do you just obey that voice that tells you to get drunk? Do you just obey that voice that tells you to steal? That means you are a slave. Do you want to keep being a slave to sin? That voice that tells you to sleep around, to commit adultery, to break God's laws. Do you just want to obey that voice? That means you are a slave to that voice. You are a slave to sin. But the good news is, you can no longer be a slave to sin if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says, as many that believe in him, he has given the power to become a son of God. You can become a son of God if you believe in God, if you believe in Jesus Christ and you surrender your life of sin, you give it all up, choose Jesus Christ, turn away from sin, turn away from drunkenness. Stop being a slave to drunkenness. Stop being a slave to smoking. Stop being a slave to sin. Turn to Jesus Christ, repent. Even if you smoke, you can repent. Repent, turn away from sin. It's not a laughing matter, you're killing yourself. You are destroying yourself. And you'll be judged when you stand before God for destroying your body. The Bible says, as many who destroy their bodies, God himself will destroy. So if you destroy your body, God will destroy you. So the question is, are you a slave to sin? Do you want to keep being a slave to sin? Do you want to live your life as a slave? Anything sin, tell, sin tells you to do, you do. Do you want to keep living under the bondage of sin? Sin is a bondage. Do you want to keep living your life under the bondage of sin? Do you want to keep living your life under the bondage of adultery? Do you want to keep living your life under the bondage of drunkenness? Ah, you see? Do you want to keep living your life under the bondage of getting high? Destroying your brain, destroying your liver, destroying your lungs, destroying your kidneys, destroying your life. There's a better way. There is a better way, and that better way is Jesus Christ. And all you need to do is to surrender your pride. Give up your pride. You are too proud. You don't want to humble yourself. You say there is no God. You want to keep living your life of sin? Humble yourself. Repent. Otherwise, you will destroy yourself. And in the end, God will destroy you. You will destroy your pride. You will break you down and you cry like a baby. If you do not repent. You will get the reward for your sin. You will get the reward for your disobedience. Many people say they are atheists. They say there is no God. But they worship Satan. And the Bible says Satan is the God of this world. So who is the fool? Who is the fool? If you say there is no God and you worship Satan, who is the fool? The Bible says God is not mocked. Whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. Whatsoever you plant, you shall harvest. So remember, God is alive and God is watching you. He's watching your every step. He's watching your every breath. He's watching every move you make. He's watching you and he's giving you a second chance today. God is giving you a second chance. God is giving you a second chance to repent. You have a second chance. What will you do with it? Will you gamble with your second chance? Will you gamble with your life? Or will you repent? 
Will you go on your knees and ask for repentance? Will you go on your knees and ask for forgiveness? Will you humble yourself today? Or will you keep rebelling against God? If you rebel against God, you can never win. But if you choose God, you choose Jesus Christ, you come over to his side, come over to the side of Jesus Christ, that is the winning side. You will become a winner. You will win. If you choose Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will win. But if you reject him and you disobey him and you keep on in your pride, you will be destroyed. If you love your drunkenness, you love your alcohol, you love your beer, you love your whiskey more than God, God will judge you on the day of judgment. If you love your sin more than you love God, you are in big trouble. You are in big trouble. If you love your weed more than you love God, you are in big trouble. If you love your girlfriend more than God, you are in trouble. If you love your cocaine and your heroin more than God, you are in trouble. If you love your sin more than God, you are in big trouble. If you love your porn more than God, you are in trouble. Jesus Christ is telling you today, forsake all your sins. Cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. Repent today because time is running out. It's time for you to repent. It's time for you to repent. Give up your vaping, give up your smoking, give up your drunkenness and choose Jesus Christ today. Repent. Otherwise you end up in hell. You will be destroyed. You will be destroyed if you do not repent. Do you love your football more than Jesus Christ? Why? Do you love your football more than Jesus Christ? Why? Because it's what? Football. What does it give you? Joy? Happiness. How long does it last? No, it doesn't last forever. Because if, you're, if your club loses, you'll be sad. No, but you, you've lost. No, if your if your club loses, you've lost already. And you'll be you'll be sad. But we can give you we we're telling you something. You'll be sad because your club has lost. Yes. But yeah, it will give you happiness, but it will make you happy forever. But I'm telling you about someone who can make you happy forever. That's Jesus Christ. Turn to Jesus Christ. He'll make you happy forever. Come to your friend. Your friend is Jesus Christ. That's your best friend. Jesus Christ, make him your best friend. Yes, make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. And you'll be happy for every day of your life. Only Jesus Christ can give you true joy and happiness. Only Jesus Christ can give you true joy and happiness. So we are calling upon you today, Huddersfield, boys and girls, men and women, come to Jesus Christ. He can give you life. He can give you joy. He can make you brand new. He loves you. Jesus loves you so much. He wants you to repent. He wants to forsake your sins. He wants you to come to him. He loves you. Come to Jesus Christ today. Repent. Turn away from sin. Turn away from drunkenness. Turn away from vaping. Turn away from swearing. Turn away from every form of sin. And come to Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, come to Jesus Christ. Men and women, come to Jesus Christ. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you so much. He wants to repair every broken thing in your life. He wants to fix your life. He wants to make you brand new. And he's saying, come out of your religion. Forsake your sin. Forsake your pride. Come to Jesus Christ. Because he can make you brand new. He can fill every void in your life. He can take away that depression. Jesus Christ wants to make you a brand new person. Just like the Bible says, anyone who comes to Jesus Christ, there is no more condemnation. So will you come to Jesus Christ today?
Okay, let me read. Now, okay. Go and, hold on. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, hold on, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Very good. Yes. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, you have, have you read the next chapter? If you read the next chapter, you see where it tells you. Now, keep the children and the women. You need to read the whole Bible. So, 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 who wrote this? That's the instruction God gave to Moses. Well, let me, let me tell you something. This, for example, when he displays others to the child, okay? Come, 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 come. Let me let me explain something to you. Yeah, yeah. For example, when Leeds plays Mother's Week, okay, and the journalist will write the next day, say Leeds destroyed Mother's Week 5 5 0. You like football? You like football? Yeah, of course. Okay, good. So Leeds destroyed Mother's Week yeah. 5 0. Does it mean that Leeds actually destroyed yeah. them? So, yeah, it. It's an instruction to destroy. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. To destroy every single thing. Every single thing. You know, you know who the Amalek is. Amalek. You know who that. Yeah, Brad Pitt. Forget about it. You can. You can. Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Even Brad Pitt. Come on. You need to know. You need to know who the Amalek is. Now, the Amalek. Come on, baby. The Amalekites. No, they I, are so, I, I agree. You, you, you I, know which you know which I, one. I agree with you. Know, you know which one. Yes. You know sorcery. Yes. You know wizard. Yeah, yeah. You know what they are. Amalekites. Let me tell you. They, they, they did very. Let me bad tell you. Hold, hold on. Let me yeah. tell you what they what they. Amalekites can turn from human to turn animals. You know that. So. You know that. I know. So that's why he said destroy only animals. Because, the infant, you know why? That's why I'm trying to do Because even the infant, they are being transformed into not human. They are into animals, another object. That's why I say destroy. So, also, read the next chapter. If you take, read the next chapter. If you see where it tells you. I have concerns about you. Read the next chapter. You make it, yeah. and you make it, yeah. It's okay. This is what. Okay, read okay. the next chapter. You see where it's, no, read the next chapter. Yes. Tell you where it's in. Take care of the children and the women. Okay, read the next chapter. Praise God. Just a quick message for us this lovely uh, afternoon. I want to, and so Father God, we, we first thank you for such an opportunity to speak to uh, people today. We thank you for a chance to share the word. Praise God. I want to start off first by telling us a short story. It's a story of a very lovely lady. Uh, she was approached by a man who said he loved her. Hey, we like, we love love, don't we? <laughs> love is sweet, yeah? Yeah, so he said he loved her and she was really happy. So he had given her a ring, he'd taken her out and, you know, all of those nice things. Bought her gifts, he opens the door for her, he, he calls her all the, the sweetest names that you know. Like, just the nine yards, he really did express his love for her. And then he said he was going away, he was going on a journey. And he was going to let her know and he will be back soon for her to take her to his family and pay the bright price and what's her view. Now whilst he was away, this young lady went back to her exes. All the ex-boyfriends, she went about, she slept with them, she did the nine yards, everything. And she just said to herself, well he's not here yet, so I can do whatever I want. And when he comes back, I'll go back to him. On a particular day, he came back, and on that day, he called her and she was in a restaurant. He got to the restaurant, he just wanted to surprise her, you know, oh, where are you, darling? Oh, I'm in a restaurant, I'm just chilling out, you know. And then he went there and he found three other men with her. The three other men that he's been, she's been with, and she was really upset. Oh, you should have told me you were coming back today so I can get ready for you. Now, he met her with three other men, 
and she was really upset that he should have told her before coming. You see, friends, some of you are like that lady. How do you feel if you were that man? You came back, the woman is with other men, and she wasn't even ready to receive you. What if he had told her he was coming the next day, and then she stopped sleeping with other men? Has she been faithful? The fact that she stopped a day before his arrival doesn't prove that she's been faithful, does it? Exactly. Your guess is as good as mine. Some of you who have rejected God, you're like that lady. You feel, when he's about to come, I'll repent. But the problem is, we don't know when he's coming. And the fact that you repent before he comes, does that mean you love him? Was she faithful? She wasn't, was she? Because she was going about doing everything else. And you see these exes, even when you say, oh, I love God, but you go about doing the same old things that God doesn't want, it's just as sinful, isn't it? So friends, you see the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 12, and there is a way that's a bit right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. Permit me to read Proverbs 14. From verse 1. A wise woman builds her home, but a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. Those who follow the right path fear the Lord. And it's that fear of the Lord indeed that is the beginning of wisdom. I carry on reading. Those who take the wrong path despise him. A fool sprouts up, becomes a rod that bits him, but the words of the wise keep them safe. Verse 5 says, The honest witness does not lie, a false witness breathes lies. Verse 8 says, the prudent understand where they're going, but fools deceive themselves. Verse 9, fools make fun of guilt, but the godly acknowledge it and seek reconciliation. Verse 10, each heart knows his own bitterness, and no one else can fully share his joy. Verse 11 says, the house of the wicked will be destroyed, but the tent of the godly will flourish. And finally, verse 12, there is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. <coughs> Any path that's not the path to Jesus, that's not Jesus. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Any path that's not Jesus leads to destruction, friends. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus. And that's the gospel we're sharing with you today. God lost the world so much that he sent his only begotten son. Whosoever, that means you, no matter who you are, green, yellow, brown, white, black, gay, fresh, straight, no matter who you are, you can be saved. You can have Jesus. Nobody's discriminated against. Everybody's welcome to repent and turn to Christ, to give up our old ways, to give up those boyfriends and, and those people, those kind of ways of life that were destructive, whatever that is, based on the story I've given you, uh, I've talked about now, to give it all up and to turn to Jesus. You see, in our own eyes, we can be really wise, can't we? we we've, we've plotted how we want to live our lives, where we want to go, what we want to do. And in one sense, we have the liberty and freedom to do that. But there is a, there's a place far away, there's a place after death, where you don't have such control. And the only way to be with God is when you have that relationship with God. God makes the rules. He is the perfect one who has given us the moral law. And there are consequences when we go, you know, against those laws. For us as humans, some of these natural laws are so obvious, the consequences are immediate. Take for example, you use a seat belt. Why? Because you honor not just the law, but you also want to acknowledge the, the natural law. I mean, if, if I wanted to experiment and I decide to go up there and I fall down, I will fall down flat and I could break a leg. But imagine if it's something moral, it may not be obvious, you know, in the first instance. For example, God said we should not commit fornication. That's sleeping with anybody other than your husband or wife. Now, if I decide to do that, I probably could use condom and nobody would know. Maybe I don't get pregnant. I just move on. Now, the, the consequence of that immoral act may not be obvious for the time. But I can tell you for free that sin can take you where you don't want to go. It seems like it's fancy and it, it promises you pleasure, but it's just temporary, it's just for a while. 
the truth is after a while begins to eat deep in maybe this particular guy that in this example i committed fornication with could break my heart and then it could lead to depression and lead to lies and lead to so many other things that's how deep sin can take you it never promises to, to he always promises the good things or what if i get pregnant and then i want to abort the child kill my own child because of it maybe out of shame or just selfishness or whatever it is now you may think oh not me I, I don't do that maybe there are other things that you do sin is sin whatever is opposed to god's will a little lie the little thing you take in the office whatever it is is sin and once it's sin god is saying the only way to be set free the only way to come to god is when you come through him and he's the one who has the perfect code. He's the one who has the perfect laws. He makes the laws because he's the only perfect being. Now, I was speaking to someone who, who you know, wanted to have some kind of philosophical and, and intellectual conversations about morality and all of these kind of things. And that reminded me of this, this Archimedean point that Gator and some other scholars talked about. But no human has gotten to that point. No society, because what we realize is that we're not perfect. No matter how many committees we form, the only perfect law is in Christ, it's in God. And that's our standard. And if we don't put up or align ourselves to God's standard, then we'll get it wrong. So how do we get it right? It's to come to Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one can go to the Father except through him. Nobody can come to God except through him. He's the only way. The arguments that, oh, there are so many ways to God, falls down flat. If you just think about it in terms of what, how we live, it's just what first go to your house, isn't it? So imagine then to the Almighty God. And I can tell you for free, guys, that God knows the road to his house. And he's saying to us that he's, the only way is Jesus. Why would people reject Jesus? Why did that lady in my story want to keep all the boyfriends? It's simple. We just don't want to have somebody who is the perfect lawgiver. We don't want to give up our sins. But there's this call that Jesus is calling us into. He has grace enough to help us. He's not calling us to... You just imagine, if somebody says to you, I want you to be clean, and then, you know, you, you try to make yourself clean before you go to the bathroom. Oh, no, you go to the bathroom. That's where you clean up, isn't it? Yeah. So Jesus is the one who actually does the cleaning. So he's saying, come to me. Don't say, I want to put my act together. I want to get it all right before I come. No, he's saying, just as you are, just come. But bear in mind as you're coming to him, is he wants to change you to be more like him. Isn't that good news? You, you, you don't have to do it all by yourself. God gives you the grace to, to do it. Yes, I can give you one. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God bless you. Oh, oh bless you. Hallelujah, glory to God. That's so good to hear. God bless you. Keep seeking him. Keep seeking him. He's God. Yeah, thank you. Oh, bless your heart. Thank you, ma'am. Right, so that's the good news. I'm super excited as well, hearing about this excitement she has for Jesus. This is good news, guys. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the one who loves us. You know, while Jesus was here, he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He was so loving. He, he, he was preaching the word. I know there was a question someone had asked earlier. What's the need, you know, printing these flyers? Can't we use the money to give to the poor? We can give to the poor, but this, but giving food to, to feed the tummy, it's good, but there is something much more eternal. And that's your life, and that's why we're here. To tell you there is a life after here, and that life can be in heaven with God. It doesn't, the, the worst thing that will happen to anybody is to wake up in hell and realize I shouldn't have been here. There was a way out. So friends, to cap it all up, to summarize, I'm here to tell you that there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is destruction. That way could be any way, could be your own religious beliefs and, and things that are legally accepted but morally wrong. It could be your own selfishness and you making yourself a god or believing in yourself as something other than what you really are. And all of these other things that seem fancy, those ways lead to destruction, but there's a way that leads to life. And that way is Jesus. And Jesus has died for you. You don't have to die the death 
of shame and separation from God. You can come to him, he's willing to save you. He saved us, that's why we're here, to share this love and this good news with you, friends. And it's my prayer, it's my sincere prayer, that you're hearing my voice today, and you will go back and think about these issues, and really ask yourself, what happens after here? Where am I going? We search a lot today, before you travel, you go, you check the internet, hotels and flights and whatnot. Have you searched to know what will happen after you die? Okay then, friends. Think these things through. I hope you will. And it's my sincere prayer that God will touch your heart to seek the truth. Search it out. Don't take our words for it. Just search it out. Really search. And if you seek sincerely, you will find. If you seek after Christ, he will answer. And so then, Lord, we pray today that for all that hear this, this message today, that you touch hearts and you will the, the, mend the broken hearted. Give us what we don't have, Lord. Teach us and touch us, oh God, in areas that we need your help, Father. And overall, that those who are seeking after you will find you, because that's your word. In Jesus' name.